Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to our service of worship today on such a sparkly day. I always like to look at the, uh, the, the ice on the trees and stuff, but I uh, don't like driving through it. Don't like driving through. I invite us all to take a moment to quiet ourselves, to still ourselves, as we prepare for worship today. Our God is awesome, full of surprises. God pours out love on all of creation. things. You gave us life. You have filled our lives with family and friends. You lavish us with your grace. You have given us this day to add to the many we have shared, and you have given us Jesus. Help us grow in our understanding and appreciation of just how much you love us, and open our hearts that our worship this day might be an act of praise and thanksgiving for all you have done for us. Amen. Our first hymn is 356, Seek Ye First the Kingdom, 356.
Good morning. The reading is Isaiah 55, 1 to 9, and it's on page 598 on the Pew Bibles. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you have that no money, can come by and eat. Come by wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do, do not know you shall run to you, because of Lord of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let, it, let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Elizabeth. Our reading from the Psalms today comes from Psalm 781, or comes from Psalm 63, found on page 781. And we'll be singing the second refrain, page 781. For you from early morning. My whole being desires you like a dry, worn, waterless land. My soul thirsts for you. thanks as long as I live. I raise my hands in prayer. As I lie in bed, I remember you, O God. I think of you all night long for you are my constant help. The Gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, reading at chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. 
and he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure, manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. Here ends our reading. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The subject matter that we have before us today is repentance. Luke's gospel felt like the God's or Jesus' gospel was a call to repentance, was a call to live in our best life for God, was a call that everything that we did in life we were to say, we were to think, and we were to be motivated to do what's best for the community, to do what's best, to do what's good for God. Every decision we make. And if we made a bad decision or we made a wrong decision, then we were to acknowledge it right away and try to rectify that bad decision and try, try not to do it again. That's Luke's gospel. And the stories that he talks about, those are the things he's trying to convey. That God's kingdom is a kingdom of repentance. Part of that is because we know uh, human nature, we tend to try to do the easy thing. We tend to try to do the thing that maybe benefit us a little bit more than somebody else. We try to do the thing that makes things a little bit better for us. And Luke is recognizing that in Jesus' vision of a kingdom, the priority is not to be us. The priority is to be the other. And in building up the other, in caring for the other, we care for ourselves. We care for ourselves. Similarly, in our uh, uh, programs for addiction, it's the same thing. We help each other, and in helping each other is, in fact, helping ourselves. Same idea. So Luke tells us a couple of stories. We don't really know these stories in history other than the fact that they were here. There, are, uh, there was a case where people came to make sacrifices in the temple and Pilate sent his soldiers in and killed them and the blood was mingled with the sacrifices in the temple. There was a case where uh, a tower fell down and some people, some innocent bystanders were there and the tower fell on them and killed them. And the, the, the people here are trying to figure out was there something bad about those people? Was there something wrong about those people for this to have happened to them in such a precarious way? Why do these bad things happen to people? And Jesus' answer is basically, that really doesn't matter. What really matters is concentrating on yourselves and, uh, and trying to do the best that you can can do. Try to live the best life you can live. Because regardless of whether you do good or do bad, you're going to die. That's a given. What's important is as you're living, do the best that you can do. Do the best that you can do. And I think, you know, I, I remember when uh, Superstore started putting those commercials on, Loblaws, and the CEO of Loblaws got on and started talking about all the nice things that were happening that you could buy at a superstore that make things so easy. And he was so personable, so sweet and nice. And that's a pretty good guy. That's a pretty good, pretty good. That's not an actor. That's a pretty good, uh, appropriate guy to be talking, the CEO. And he seemed so personable. And then we find out later that he spent millions of dollars trying to suppress legislation to uh, raise the minimum wage. Try to suppress uh, the possibility of people having a livable income. Not living his best life. 
not doing the best that he possibly could be doing, no matter how charming he is. There's this on the other side. We see in the Ukraine now, people are coming out, uh, McDonald's is leaving, all these people are leaving Ukraine because uh, some moral issue that they do not, or not Ukraine, Russia, so this moral issue of what's happening in the Ukraine is going to something that they don't want to be part of. So they're leaving and they're stopping things. And then we find out that Nestle says, well, you know what, uh, we're making too much money here. I don't think we're going to go out. Those Russian people need Smarties too. Not living their best life. Not living the best they can do. I saw somebody on the news the other day talking about China. If China is so involved in uh, commercial things and selling things to people, that if Russia, uh, or if China helps Russia with military uh, might, uh, then people just aren't gonna buy things made in China. This is not living their best life. Not doing what we feel is more, personally, is morally responsible for us. The things that we do have consequences. The things that we do personally have consequences. The things we do as a, an entity have consequences. The things we do in business have consequences. And it's being consistent with those consequences, trying to, or being consistent with our behavior, trying to follow uh, this idea of God's kingdom that has been placed before us, this invitation of God's kingdom that has been placed before us, individually and corporally. How do we do that? keeping in mind the consequences that our behavior, our actions have in the world around us, with the people that surround us here, but the people that surround us outside of these walls, and the people that surround us across the ocean. The consequences of what we do. Jesus is saying in this reading from Luke that the top priority is to live the life that God would want you to live. To live the life that would bring the most good into the world around us. Into the world around us. In every decision that we make. In every decision. Whether we buy a box of Smarties. I'm not saying boycott Smarties. But put some pressure on them. You know, there is a dichotomy here in the parable that Jesus is talking about, about the fig tree. There is an immediacy that you need to live God's life now. You need to make the decisions that you have to do, the decisions that would be seeing good in the eyes of God now. But there's also a, a, a let's wait to next year as well. The priority of the fig tree is to grow figs, it's not to grow leaves. And if the fig tree is not growing figs, then the fig tree is obsolete, it's no good. So let's cut it down and put something else in that's gonna grow. And the gardener says, give me one more chance to really nurture it and to care for it. And we'll see what happens. And you notice the story doesn't tell us what happens. It's just the possibility is out there now for new growth to happen. For people to make the best decisions that they can. For life to, to nourish us in a way that we are able to perform as God would have us perform. If we were able to do as God would have us do. If we were able to be as God would have us be. That assumption is there. I had a couple of years ago, I had mentioned to a friend of mine, I want to try growing strawberries. And they had a bunch of strawberries that they gave me. And they told me, when you put them into the ground, the first year, 
pick off the berries as they're starting to form and put all, concentrate all the energy into the roots that are going into it. And, uh, and then the next year, you'll have a much better crop of strawberries. And I thought to myself, well, that doesn't make much sense to me. I think it's just strawberries is only a small plant. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do half of that, half of the patch, I did that, and the other half of the patch, I didn't do that. And the first year I went in, I picked off on half the patch uh, all the little strawberries as they were starting to form. And I got a, a little bit of strawberries, a couple of bowlfuls of strawberry from the other half that first year. The second year, the berries on the ones that I had picked off, the bushes were full of berries. And the other ones were a little bit scarcer probably the same as the year before. And I said, you know what? That works. All of the energy went into the roots and eventually it was able to perform in a way that was even better, even better. And I went out the next morning and picked some berries and I had the fattest crows in my neighborhood. No berries. They enjoyed my experiment. They enjoyed my experiment, but we need to nurture and we need to care for the things of this world. And when we are nurtured and when we are cared for, we become better. We have less issues that we need to deal with. We have a more of a focus on and a comfortableness in, in who we are. And we're able to do the things to help each other more and not have a need to do things for us. Not have a need to show everybody what we can do. You know, I always thought that if, uh, if Donald Trump had a father that loved him, we wouldn't have been in the mess we were a few years ago. Probably true. He wouldn't have ended up being like he was. Well, there are genetics. He probably would have been like that a little bit, but he wouldn't have had to show it to everybody wouldn't have had to show it to everybody if there was nurturing that happened. Nurturing that happened. You know, I had Sophia went to a volleyball tournament last Saturday, last Friday, and came back. And uh, I asked her how she did, and she said, we lost every game. I said, did you have fun? She said, yeah. And I said, well, isn't it more important to have the fun and to learn how to play and then have that as something that you can do for the rest of your life? And she said, yeah, it is. But we set it up so it's so competitive. So competitive. She came home, loves going to volleyball, loves going to volleyball practice, came home from that tournament and felt bad about herself because they lost. Forgetting how much she loves playing How do we nurture each other so that we're able to be the best we can be, so that we're able to do the best we can do? The best we can do. I believe it's God within us that does that for people and feeds people that way so that they can be better and as they're better, we can be better. And as we're better individually, we're better as a group. And we're better in the world. And there's something about us that people see, which is what happened when Jesus was alive. Those first believers acted in a way that was different. That they cared for each other and they nurtured each other and they welcomed each other in a way that was so drastically different from the world around them. I think we need to get back to that. Get back to that. What is it that we do that causes good things to happen in people's lives? And what are the things that we do that causes bad things to happen in, in people's lives? 
Now, Jimmy Carter's quoted as saying, we will never have world peace until we stop killing each other's children. I said, Bill Burr, comedian, said, why doesn't every, all the soldiers just drop their weapons down, stop fighting. And if infantile leaders want to prove something to themselves because of whatever reason, let them duke it out. Wars will stop. Wars will stop. Children will stop dying. Stop dying. What is it that we do that can foster that type of thinking in the world around us? That's your homework for this week. I want a hundred word essay. <laughs> what can we do? What can you do? What can I do to make things a little bit better? Because that's what Lent is all about, making us better, making us more aware, making us more conscious, waiting for that resurrection moment when new life is possible. What can we do? Amen. Our next hymn is 651. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. 651.
your children everywhere know your goodness. Help us, your church, to become more perfect witnesses of your grace so that all may see you in us. Let us pray for all in positions of power and government and business that God may guide their hearts and minds so all may live in peace and justice. God of power and love, defender of the poor and oppressed, call to account the rulers of this world so that people everywhere may enjoy justice, peace, and freedom and a fair share of the goodness of creation. Let us pray for all who are sick or dying, all who are homeless or in prison, for all who suffer from hunger or violence. God of power and love, strength of the weary, hope of the despairing, hear the cries of your suffering children and give us the courage to be agents of your love for them. We pray in the name of Christ our Savior, the same Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'd like to direct your attention to the announcements that are found in your bulletin. First of all, bulletins this week have been generously donated in memory of Reverend Donald Pierce by the family. To the local fund, we have uh, memorials in memory of Linda Cookson from Ann Davies and from Ross and Carolyn Richards. In memory of Babe Cormier from Ann and Ross and Carolyn as well. In memory of Kay Morrison from Walter and Kay Ingram and from Ross and Carolyn. And in memory of Mary Lou Morris by Ross and Carolyn. And we thank those who have remembered our family past and present in this way. Next Sunday is our annual congregational meeting, and uh, please note that's open for everybody, so please come and fo immediately follow the service. Year-end reports are at the back of the church in the lobby. There are limited copies, so if you're planning on coming to the meeting, please bring your copy that you pick up uh, with you. Elizabeth Pierce Guild will be meeting Monday, March 21st at 2 o'clock in the boardroom. Please use the office entrance. Official board will be meeting Thursday, March 24th at 7 in the boardroom. Uh, just a reminder, there are still health, public health protocols at the hospital. Uh, it used to be I could go in and they would give me a, a form telling me all the United Church people in the hospital. Uh, they can't do that anymore, so if you know of someone in hospital, please uh, let me know so that I will have a chance to drop in and, and see them. Uh, we're looking at April 3rd, Sunday, April 3rd, as starting up with Sunday school. So if you want to pass that information along, try to get some of our young families back. April 3rd, we'll be meeting here at the church, in the church. Uh, Board of Stewards have a couple of items. They're looking at doing another uh, dessert auction. Uh, we did one for Christmas and it went over quite well. We're going to try another one on uh, for Easter. And we will be doing it between October, April 2nd and April 9th. If anyone would like to donate a dessert, please uh, contact Patricia McDonald. And her, uh, her contact information is there. And also on June 11th, we're looking at having a basement to attic sale. So uh, I know the last couple of years, everybody has been... Uh, uh, stuck at home, looking at all kinds of things that they had, say, why do I still have that? Well, you have it still for this basement to attic sale. So if you can drop it off at the church or give us a call and we can ensure that someone can pick it up. And then come on June 11th and buy it back. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? 
for the offerings that have come in this past week, let us bow our heads in prayer. You have given us the greatest gift of all, O oh God. You put your love in our hearts, and now we want to share it with the world. May our giving of this offering be only one of the ways in which we share your love with others. Amen. Our final hymn is number 675, Will Your Anchor Hold, 675. find in the cross a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And may the blessing of God go with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>